Hey guys, it's me, it's me, it's May to December, it's me. And I'm back again with another review of another horror film, Almost Human. This film stars Graham Skipper, Vanessa Lee and Josh Epha. And it's directed by Joe Bigos. And it's got a ton of extra features on it. It's got a commentary of writer director Joe Bigos and Josh Epha. Commentary of writer director Joe Bigos, Jeff Epha, Graham Skipper, and Corey Lockman. A feature length making of behind the scenes on the set with Graham Skipper. A short film called Toxin. A theatre called Trailer. Alternate trailers. Vintage TV spot and photo gallery. Not bad. Not bad at all. I love the cover art on this. When you open it up inside, you just got the disc and the standard case. So basically, at the beginning of the film, it has Seth driving along, going, oh, oh, at his car, trying to get somewhere before something's after him. So he gets to his friend Mark's house, played by Josh Ether. And basically goes in there, says there's blue light, and the bloke goes, and Mark goes to him, where's Rob? I thought one was coming with me and he goes, he's they took him or something. So Seth basically is all like paranoid and Mark's like, yeah, okay, you sure you're right? And then the blue light hits the window. Ooh. And then basically Jen turns up asking what's going on because there's this big lad screeching noise like a car alarm and a um school alarm and all that all mixing like like that, you know? And Mark goes outside, he gets beamed up, he says, beam me up, Scotty, boom, it's gone. Well, he doesn't tell him to, but they just take him. So, it's supposed to be two years later, and on the news, they're going on about a weird thing that's happening, all these strange occurrences, and Seth goes to talk to Jen at where she works at this diner place, where her boss has cut her shift on the Thursday. Asshole. That's the highlight of the movie. He cut her, it's not really, but she get, he cut her shift by, and it, he cut her shift by every Thursday. Her boss. Important. So, she's upset about that, she sees Seth, she thinks Seth's going a bit crazy, like we all do, and thinks nothing of it. Then all of a sudden you see a naked man laying in like, I'm guessing the woods, and two blokes walk up to him, it, it turns out to be none other than Mark. He's come back. So what does he do? This is where it's funny, because it, I'm going to cut in just for a minute and talk about the movie just a slight sec. Um, if I can with synopsis and basically what happens and all this other stuff. He gets taken by aliens, but for the majority of the film, it's just killing people. There's no alienness to it, other than what I'm going to tell you about in a minute. So basically, he slits their throats and that and kills them. And all this other stuff. He, get, oh, he always won't fight the other one to shoot and then kills the other one. That's right. And then basically, a little while through, he's killing all these other people. Very forgettable. And a, this thing comes out of his mouth and sucks on their face. And basically, I'm guessing, kind of impregnates their body with something. Like, takes their body over with, like, an alien thing. Because it goes through it. And they start coughing and go, with all this white stuff. So I'm guessing it's got to do with that. So that happens, and it turns out it's into this little, I don't know what it's like, it's like this room. And they're harvesting or something, because they're, they're oh no, sorry, not they're, they're not harvesting, they're, they're uh, being reborn in this weird cocoon looking things. But when they're reborn, they're reborn as humans again, but just have white stuff on them, look like they've been at a boot cake bowl kind of thing, you know, when multiple people come on you. That's what it basically looked like. Um... I should probably cut that out, but I'm not gonna. Um, so that's what it was like, you know. And then they're going after him, and they cut his arm off, and all this. He stabs him in the finger. So what does what is Mark's goal? It's to get Jen back. He wants to get Jen. He wants to be with Jen. He wants to take over the uh, area with her as the queen. I'm guessing. So he turns up, and her boyfriend Clyde opens the door and he goes, oh no, yo, and he goes, is Jen here? And he goes, no. And he goes, Mark, what the fuck are you doing here? And Mark basically kills him. And then she gets home and he just turns up, Mark, and he goes, hey, up. 
and she hugs him and realizes it's Clyde's blood on him and starts running screaming. And you're like, eh. Mm. And then and he finally gets her in the bedroom and his sucky sucky thing that comes out of his mouth open his mouth. He whips her pants off, her trousers and her knickers, and the sucky thing goes down on her on her uh, vagina. And you're like, bloody hell, this is crazy. Place. So Seth then comes in with a shotgun, shoots him in the head, and it's gone. So Seth goes looking for something, and all of a sudden, one of these cocoon people comes after him. And Mark has got this little alien thing sticking out of his shot-off head. You know, like, then the neck bit. There it is. And it shoots the thing at Jen, and then it goes in her mouth. And it's like, oh. And you're like, yeah, she's done this before. And, um... You carry on watching, and basically at the end, at the very end, she turns funny, and he, she attacks somebody, and she's sucking on him with her thing, her alien tube thing, and Seth decides to run her over. So he gets out of the car, and she goes like this, all bloody like, Don't kill me, Seth, it's me, it's Jen, it's me, help me. He's got this big rock, and you're like, Is he going to be nice? Is he going to help her? No. He smashes her face in. And then a police officer turns up by that moment and shoots him. So technically they all die. And um, the film, in my view, it was alright. For 79 minutes, it was alright. Technically it was 71 minutes because the intro and the credits was 8 minutes. And um, it wasn't that good. I mean, it was a fun watch because it's very retro. Like, there's got the real 80s feel to it. It's a real 80s feel to the movie, and it's a lot of fun, but at the same time, it's kind of like being there, done that, and there's nothing new on the table. Like, you see some um, flashbacks of what happened to him when the aliens took him, but it's so scrambled and so all over the place, that you can't really tell what's going on, other than he's probably being tortured, or being basically infected with something. So I would have liked to have seen more of that, and I'd like to have seen more of what the alien things were. Instead of just seeing him be a serial killer. So when it ended, I got me, I was kind of glad because I was like, it didn't really go anywhere, you know. And um, Graham Skipper, who played Seth, looked like he should have been in, um, looked like he should have been in, uh, uh, what is it, Dead Snow. That's what he looked like he should have been. He looked like he should have been in Dead Snow in some other movie. Um, you know, the way of the Nazi zombies. That's what he looked like he should have been in. I'm just looking at their uh, gross, uh, the gross, and they only made $6,986 from the movie in their gross. On their opening weekend, they made $1,888. That's not a lot, is it? But then I think it was in selected cinemas anyway, because it's very, it's low budget. But it's well, it's well done. I mean, it's a lot better than a lot of the other kind of... Um, Cheap hovers I've seen. It's got good effects. It's got a good cast, even though some of them are really bad at acting at certain periods. It is an overall fun, but it gets boring because you just don't. You want to see a story unfold. You don't want to see someone get taken and then them come back just killing people and then them get killed and then their partner get killed and that's it. You don't want to see that. You want to see a proper story. Like why didn't the aliens come down like in Predator Two? And give Seth a gut, give Seth a sword or something. I don't know. It would been it would been good, but you know it was all right. I'd give it a I'd give it a two. Um, because it's one of those that I probably won't watch again for a very long time. I'm glad it's in my collection because of the cool artwork on the front, but very disappointing if you ask me. I was expecting a lot more from it. So my overall faults. If you like films that look 80s like, but are not, but a film now, this is a good film for you. If you like films that look like they're on a low budget, but are pretty well shot, this is for you. If you like, you know, if you like, if you like, you know, like serial killer kind of things, this is for you. But if you want a real story, this isn't, because it doesn't really go anywhere in my view. So if you don't want a story, skip this or get it really cheap if you see it. It's worth one watch, but I'm not sure if I'll watch it again. So yeah, that's almost oh, that's almost human. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.